Morning again. Well, we're on to the piece of teaching widely known as the parable of the sower. And you'll find it in verses 4 to 15 of Luke 8. And as usual, please hit the pause button, find the passage and read before continuing. It's important that as we seek to be disciples of Jesus that we don't take the shortcut of just listening to someone else, me, rattle on and read God's word for ourselves. If that's teaching granny to suck eggs, apologies, but it is important. The context is that Jesus is drawing ever larger crowds from all over the place, but any crowd is going to be a mixed bag of people. I mean, have they all come for great reasons? Well, of course not. I mean, some are going to be idly curious. Some are genuinely spiritually hungry. And others probably just fancy a morning off. Now, they're in a wide variety of places, spiritually speaking, and like most churches. Jesus knows this perfectly well. Um, but rather than confront everyone directly he challenges them in a typical rabbinic way and tells his first parable parables being a short story to illustrate a point a spiritual truth now it's not a teaching method that jesus invented but he used it to great effect because it forces people to think now, the point of this story is not about the sower, and it isn't about the seed either. There's nothing wrong with the seed. It's top quality. It's God's word. It's really better described as the parable of the soils, four of them. Interestingly, there's a very similar rabbinic parable that compares the rabbi's disciples to four items, a sponge, a funnel, a strainer and a sieve with very similar implications. I won't bother elaborating here. But interestingly, incidentally, this, par this parable is not primarily about evangelism. It's about concrete lifestyle results of taking in, taking on board the seed. Most of the seed in this parable did sprout, but not all of it came to much. Apparently, in Jesus' day, before selective breeding to increase yields, modern farming, etc., the norm actually would be five to ten seeds, grains, in a head of wheat or barley. A hundredfold would be truly remarkable. Such a yield is actually mentioned just once in the Old Testament where God particularly blessed the patriarch Isaac, and that's Genesis 26, if you want to look it up. So let's imagine ourselves, however, into the story we've got in front of us. I doubt any of us would consider ourselves hard ground in one ear and out the other, or shallow types that give up after the first knockback. Oh, and apart from anything else, you're here with an appetite to muse. But the proof is in the pudding. Are we actually growing? And where's the evidence for that? Well, the chances are that if you're listening to this, your greatest risk, like mine, comes from weeds and thorns that are constantly threatening <clears throat> to choke and shade out the wheat, to deprive it of nutrition, to wind around it and haul it down. Truth be told, this happens to a lot of us in the busyness of life and it takes great effort and determination to avoid as I write this, it's harvest time. It's the season of mists and mellow fruitfulness, according to Keats. Well, we had our first autumn mist yesterday morning. So how's your personal crop these days? Amuse and grace and peace to you.